Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be Automotive Weekly Waveform 16. Um, we're not using the pole sensors today. We have to use a pressure transducer for this test. And what we're gonna be doing is checking oil pressure. Um, a mechanical gauge, like so. Um, you really can't see accuracy below 10 PSI. Um, this one does have a five PSI indicator, but my needle sitting just below the five anyways. Um, this is the highest quality gauge out there, but even the better gauges, if you want a gauge that goes up to, this one goes to 100 PSI, you sacrifice the accuracy down low. So the best route to go, and what I like to do with I'm checking oil pressure, is use a pressure transducer. Now, in this video, we are gonna use the WPS 500 um, with the Pico scope, and we are gonna use the Snap-on pressure transducer. This is the, I think 100 PSI, yeah, the 100 PSI unit for Snap-on. And we're gonna check engine oil pressure. Now, sometimes I will add a sink channel on there as well, just so I can calculate RPM, which makes it kind of handy if you're submitting paperwork for extended warranties, um, anything like that. Insurance companies, even some customers wanna see that. What, what's the spec, what RPM, and how much oil pressure do I have? So that's why I like going this route, documentation. This vehicle behind me, I just finished up some major repair. Uh, we did, actually did a transmission on it and fixed some gaskets in the timing cover. It only had three pounds of oil pressure at idle before I did the work. So I wanna verify that I have good oil pressure now. So I figured I'd walk you guys through this one. So in this vehicle, I already removed the oil pressure sending unit. Um, it has just a, like an eighth inch pipe thread on it. It might be metric, but um, my hose fit in it just fine. Um, what I use for most of my testing is a hydraulic hose that I had built. I have another one somewhere, but it seems to be missing. That's a little bit longer. Um, this one's about four, four feet long. And I have the Foster quick disconnect connectors on this hose, just like what comes on the WPS 500. And this one here is a 3202 Foster connector. This one is female on the quick disconnect and female on the eighth inch pipe thread. On the other end, I typically have the male connector because I use this as an extension hose between my test couplers, but sometimes I take that fitting off of there if I'm threading it in for checking oil pressure. Um, and then otherwise I would just thread in a quick disconnect that has an eighth inch pipe thread in it into the block and then hook my hose up. But it's typically easier for me to just to take the fitting off and thread my hose straight in. I'm not gonna be driving the vehicle so I don't have to worry about you know routing this around the tire or anything. But since I have a quick get disconnect here, I can easily swap between my WPS 500, my mechanical gauge, I've swapped the hose on this for the same fitting, or the snap-on pressure transducers. Um, I use the same hose and gauge setup for testing fuel pressure, transmission pressure, engine oil pressure, uh, pretty much anything pressure related, I use the same setup since it's a quick disconnect setup and all of my adapters have those same fittings. It's very modular and I can interchange very quickly. These seals do wear out in the quick disconnect couplings um, after so long, especially used on the fuel system. So like right now I am down to my last <laughs> bits and pieces. Um, so I'm gonna have to order a bunch of these. They're not the cheapest things in the world, but they are kind of handy. I don't know if you can buy a rebuild kit for them, but if I can, then that's the route I'll go. I think, I think the first thing we'll do is use the snap-on. Um, so I'm gonna fire up the Zeus. I'll hook up this probe. Now when using this probe on the snap-on, um, at least with the Zeus, I have this little adapter harness. This is gonna plug into the top of the Zeus. It's going to power up the sensor. The sensor requires power. So that's gonna do it for me. We're gonna go on screen. We're gonna calibrate that probe, um, which is gonna give us a good zero mark. We're gonna hook it up and start up the vehicle and let it run. If you're trying to use the ATS or the snap-on transducers on something other than the Verus or the Zeus or the older Modus that doesn't have the DB9 connector, then you're gonna need a five volt breakout box that can power this sensor up. Um, Snap-on has one that works with the Triton and it works directly with these sensors or you can get them online as well. So I have everything plugged into the Zeus. 
We're going to open up our settings tab. If I can click the right button. Probe number one is going to be pressure. 100. Do we want to calibrate this? Yes, it is not connected to the vehicle. It's sitting on the bench. It says that it is calibrated. We don't need to invert it. Channel two will turn off for now. And we're gonna go up to 100 PSI. Since I don't know exactly what the pressure is now that I have this repaired, um, we don't wanna go off the screen. Before it only had 16 pounds at 2000 RPM and my spec is 45 pounds. And then I had three pounds of idle, spec was 14. We can plug this into the quick disconnect. I'll lower the vehicle down and start it up and we'll look to see what kind of pressure we have. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and start it up. I'll wait for the idle to level out just a little bit so we can get our, our idle reading. And then I'll raise the RPM up to the 2000 mark and we'll get a second reading. We are on fast idle. We're idling about 1500 RPM and the engine is still cold. So we may not get down to that complete idle mark at this point. We'll see if it'll come down enough to where we can get, you know, a close to idle reading. Keep in mind, it will drop a little bit as the engine's completely warmed up, but I didn't have anywhere near this much oil pressure before. While I'm letting this warm up, okay, so we've been running for about five minutes. Um, the idles come down to, to pretty much normal idle speed. The pressure will probably drop as it warms up, um, but we have a pretty good reading. We are, we are sitting like 37 PSI. Um, I guess we could look at the live, yeah, 37 PSI. And so now that I have that, let me raise the RPM to 2000 RPM. We can save that two, those two measurements on the screen, and then we'll jump onto the Pico scope. Hit the stop button here, zoom out. I have quite a bit of time on the screen here. Um, I just need to look at this last little bit to get our measurements. It was a little tricky to get it to stay at 2000 RPM. Um, that's why we see the fluctuations here. But with, with this on the screen, I can put a cursor here where I was sitting at idle. My second cursor is once I got it leveled out and then we can look at our measurement tab and we can see that I was at 35 PSI, uh, pounds of oil pressure at idle and I had 70 pounds at 2000 RPM. Um, this confirms my fix. I know that, you know, the repairs that I did on this engine um, fixed all the issues. Because these quick disconnects have a check valve in them, I can just unhook this one. You might get a couple of drips of oil. Let me plug in the WPS 500. Okay, so jumping over to the PicoScope. The vehicle's been running for quite a bit longer. The cooling fans still haven't come on yet. Um, but I forgot to hit the record button, so we're doing it all over again. I am currently sitting at 19 pounds or 20 pounds of oil pressure, just under 20 pounds of oil pressure sitting at idle. And we're still dropping a little bit. As long as we retain above 14, then we know that we're still within spec. But let's talk about my blue channel up here at the top. Um, it looks like a whole lot of noise and that's because I have so much time on the screen. But I just have my coil on plug paddle probe from AES Wave, this came with my U-scope. And I just have this sitting in here next to one of the ignition coils. That's gonna allow me to get an RPM reading for documentation with this capture. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and start over again so I have a full buffer screen to, to not chop anything off. Right now we're capturing a decent idle reading. The pressure might drop a little bit as it continues to warm up, but I'm gonna go and try and hold it around 2000 RPM and then we'll come out here, we'll hit the stop button and we'll take some measurements. 
We'll hit space bar. We'll, we'll zoom in on this a little bit. So I can throw my two cursors on here and see that I have about 19 pounds of oil pressure at idle. Um, it may drop a little bit with temperature and 52 PSI when I hold the RPMs up. Let's jump back to the snap-on real quick now that we're fully warmed up or almost fully warmed up and take one more capture with the snap-on and see if the pressure readings match. Keep in mind we were at 16.77. We might be slightly lower now because it's been a couple more minutes. We're currently at 16.2. And I'm going to raise the RPM. We'll stop and save that capture as well. Press stop, zoom out. Now at the end, I was able to hold it pretty consistent um, about 19.5 according to the tachometer. So I can put a measurement there, put a measurement over here. We see that we are at 15.98 at idle. We are at 44.76 at 2000 RPM. I can just take a screenshot of this, submit it to the insurance company or extended warranty company, or just saving it for my personal records to verify that this vehicle had oil pressure after the repair and before I sent it on its way. So a couple of different options on the transducers, a couple of different options on the scope today, um, snap-on, PicoScope, and their corresponding transducers, 100 PSI transducer on the snap-on, the WPS 500 with the Pico scope. We measured the oil pressure. Um, we did get a sink channel just to, to measure some RPM. Um, some vehicles, it'd probably be a little bit cleaner if I went into the coil trigger, or even if I went to the crank sensor and got a measurement from the crank sensor that way, and then did the actual crank decoding. That would give me a better RPM. Um, but honestly, the, if you just have measurements on the screen of at idle and at the certain RPM where the spec is, most extended warranty companies or insurance companies are gonna accept that and be grateful for that because they don't have to send their field rep out and watch you do those tests all the time. Um, at least we have a pretty good working relationship. I just take a cap the capture, send it to them, they probably look through the history to make sure I'm not sending them the same one, but we haven't had any issues or had to go through and repeat those tests for the insurance companies since we have it documented on the computer. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.